Hello, this is Hans van der Kwas, Senior Lecturer at IHE Delft Institute for Water Education. Somebody recently asked me on my YouTube channel if I could make a video on how to make a hypsometric curve in QGIS. This video will demonstrate how to do that. A hypsometric curve can be used to estimate the percentage of a study area that is above a certain elevation. For this task, we need a catchment boundary polygon, we need a digital elevation model, and I added here a hill shade just to get a nice visualization of the starting point of this demonstration. There are other videos that show how to delineate a catchment. The first step is to calculate the total catchment area. So go to the attribute table of the catchment polygon, toggle the editing, and then go to the field calculator. I create a new output field name, catch area, which is a decimal. And I keep it as uh, 10 digits and three uh, decimals. And I use the dollar area function. And there I have the catchment area in square meters. And I save it. The next step is to divide our digital elevation model into classes. And then for each class, we will determine the area. An easy way to do that is to go to the styling panel. Make sure that you have the actual numbers of minimum and maximum values in the DEM. And you have chosen min max. And there we switch it to discrete. Then you see that the classes are discrete boundaries and we change to equal interval and we choose the number of classes that we want. I just choose here nine, so we have nine points later. I export this color file as a text file because I can use the numbers later to do the classification of the raster using a table. We can close the layer styling panel and open the processing toolbox. There I search for classification and I choose the reclassify by table tool. Now I open the classes.txt file because I need those class boundaries to be used in the reclassification table. So I click on the three dots to open the reclassification table and I add nine rows for nine classes. And now I'm going to copy the class boundary values. I use the lower boundaries as the reclassification value and I change the settings here as shown in the video. And I save the output, let's call it uh, the um, reclass. Then we run it and there we have our reclassified DEM. The next step is to polygonize these raster classes. So I can use Vector geometry polygonize. The problem is if I use that one that it will only use the integer values and I don't have control on uh, having the DN numbers as float or as uh, integer. So that's not what I need. So I'm going to use the other one, raster pixels to polygons, which uh, preserves the data type. I change the field name to elevation and I save the output Let's call it them classes. And I run. This will take a long time. If you would have used the other method, it's much uh, quicker. Uh, but then you will only have integer elevation values. Once it's done, we can open the attribute table. That will take a lot of time because it generated a lot of polygons. So the next step is that we are going to dissolve. Go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, Dissolve. So it will make all the classes uh, a unique polygon for which we can later calculate the area. Let's call it them classes dissolved. Save it. Run it, it'll take a while. When it's done, if we check the attribute table, then we see that for each elevation class, we have one polygon. So the next step is to add the uh, area. So create a new output field name, call it class area. We choose that it's a decimal number, real, and we keep the defaults. And then we add this uh, function, dollar area again, to calculate the area for each polygon. 
and it will use the map unit. So here we have the class areas for each elevation class in square meters. I'm going to copy the whole catchment area value because I need that to calculate the percentage. Go back to the field calculator and I call it percentage area. Again, a decimal number. Keep the field length and position as it was. And then class area divided by the area of the polygon. I change here the comma to a dot. That's because of my language settings, because uh, it needs a dot here. Times 100.0 to calculate the percentage. And there is the percentage of each polygon. Let's save the attribute table. Next step is to export the attribute table to a CSV file. So go to export, save features as, make sure you choose CSV file and give it a file name. Call it hypsometry.csv. And I choose that it has no geometry because there are no coordinates in it. And make sure to uncheck add saved file to map because we're first going to edit this in a spreadsheet program. So open it with LibreOffice. And those settings seem okay, so here it is. I'm going to sort the first column. There it is. And from high to low elevation, and I add a column called cumulative, where I'm going to calculate the cumulative percentages. So 2.126% is higher than 620 meters. And then I'm going to add those percentages to get the cumulative values. So it adds up to 100%. I save the file, use the CSV format. Then close LibreOffice. Now I'm going to add the CSV file using the delimited text uh, importer, just to make sure that all the settings are okay. Use no geometry. And there it's added as a table. You can open the table and there you see that all the values are there that we need to create our curve. Now to create a graph, we can use the data plotly plugin. I install it. We open the data plotly plugin using the button. Make sure you choose scatter plot and the hypsometry table. For the x field, we choose cumulative, and the y field is the elevation. You can change this to points and lines. Then let's give it a title hypsometric curve. You don't need a legend for the X label, cumulative area percentage, elevation meters above sea level, and let's create the plot. And there's the final result. Basically the plot shows uh, the percentage of area above a certain elevation. So above zero is 100%. Well, Above the others, it's less. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, if you want more free materials on GIS, please have a look at IHC Delft Open Courseware at gisopencourseware.org.